to make the devil's food part of our cake. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the oven up to 350. I want to make sure that my rack is not at the halfway point of the oven, but is at the mark just below, kind of the one third the way up. That way when my cake is in the oven, it'll be about at the halfway point. Let me preheat the oven. The oven needs to preheat to 350 degrees. The next thing we're going to do is we have our flour here. We want to add our baking soda and our salt to our flour. This is cake flour that I have and it's already been sifted. Now I just want to kind of mix this together so that it's all mixed in well. That's now ready to be used in the cake recipe. The next thing I want you to do, and I already did this so this should be cooling down, is you have, I have a half a cup of warm water and I have some cocoa powder. And they're together in the cup and I have just whisked them. They're all mixed together. And this has been set aside so that it can cool and thicken. What we're going to do next is I have my buttermilk and I have my cool water. I'm going to combine these and my two teaspoons of vanilla. And with that, I'm just going to kind of mix it, make sure it's all stirred together. The next thing I need to do is I need to whisk my two eggs together. I don't have another one of these small whisks like I'm using in the hot cocoa. And if you don't have a small whisk, you can just use a fork. And all I want to do is just kind of mush up the yolks. And once you get the yolks kind of mushed up, you just go like this until it's all combined. You want the yolks and the whites to be combined. And it's not, you don't need a huge bowl because you're not making big motions. You're just mixing them together. And it may take a little bit longer using a fork, but it still does the job. All right. Besides having those ingredients together and ready, I also have measured out my brown sugar and my white sugar and I have my butter here. I have the butter now in the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and mix this until it's creamy. Just a few seconds. Now this but I already brought this butter to room temperature so it doesn't take a whole lot to get it creamy. Once that's creamy I'm going to slowly add my sugars. between six and seven minutes. I will be back with you when this is creamy and light and fluffy. This is light and fluffy. Now I'm going to slowly add the eggs. I want to beat the eggs in until this is fluffy and velvety. And Every so often I like to stop the beaters so I can scrape down the bowl. What I want to do now is I'm going to add my chocolate mixture. I want to scrape it all up because I want as much chocolate in there as I can get.
Now this I want to beat on medium speed just until well mixed. The next part I'm going to do is I'm going to add the flour and the milk and water mixture. I want to add the flour in four parts and I want to add the milk in three parts. I need to just kind of look and see what it looks like one-fourth of that is. That looks like about one-fourth. Then I just want to mix this. I want it on a fairly low speed because I don't want it all poofing up on me. I think I want to actually, now that most of it's mixed in, I want to scrape that down. We want to get it all in there. Turn that back on. Stir it in. Then I want to add about one third of this mixture. When I see that is all the way mixed in, I'm going to add another fourth of this mixture. Not dry like stick on the side, so I want to scrape it down, make sure it's none on the beater, it's all down in there. I'm now ready to add another third of that. Then I'm going to add half of what's left. I'm going to add the last of the milk. I'm going to go ahead and stop this so that I can get this in without getting it on there again. And I'm going to add the rest of the flour. I'm just wanting to get this all mixed in. Now we have our cake batter all done. I'm going to be cooking my, two, my cake into these pans. These pans have been prepared. I've sprayed them down with my flour spray. And then and I also put some parchment paper on the bottom. Want to try to make sure I'm putting equal amounts in both pans. Doesn't have to be exact, so we're not measuring it, we're just eyeballing it. But you do want it to be pretty close to the same. Since these are only nine inch cakes, we don't need to put a core or anything in there. We're now gonna cook this in the oven at the 350 degrees for 20 minutes, and then we'll check it and see if it's ready. I will be back with you once this is done cooking. My cake is out of the oven and it has cooled about 20-30 minutes. Notice my cake, it's light to the touch. What I want to do is I just want to make sure that none of it's sticking to the side. So I'm just taking that around and then I'm going to put this rack on top of the cake and I'm going to dump my cake out. I didn't have a 9 inch parchment. I decided to go with the smaller size, the 8 inch, because the 10 inch would have gone up along the sides and I didn't want that. Now once I have that off, I do want to flip this back so that it is around on the right side. And now we are going to let this come completely to room temperature. When this is at room temperature, we're then going to wrap it overnight. And then that will make this firm up. And then tomorrow morning, we'll be able to tort it, put some of that ganache on it, and decorate it. I'll be back with you tomorrow when all of this stuff is ready for decorating the cake.